let's discuss the cost of conspiracy theories. In my show, Overthinking Everything, all season I'm deconstructing a culture of cultism. That cultism is toxic white Southern culture. That's not sweet tea Southern. It's not Andy Griffith and Cracker Barrel Southern. It's, it's far more insidious. It's more of a migration of Northern Europe to Southern America and a lot of the values that, prim I don't say primitive, that's rude, but you know, post-medieval uh, to colonial Northern Europe. Uh, migrating over here, some of those uh, qualities and traits, um, some of those fears and superstitions that came from some of the things that happened hundreds of years ago, but they're passed down generationally. And I know it sounds really heady, and it's like, why the hell would I want to listen to that? I know, but it's not a it's not a podcast for everybody. It's not a show for everybody. It's very cerebral, and I, I, if you want to listen to it, I'm going to invite you to um, give me some feedback because I, I uh, it, it's kind of all over the board because what this is. Is, is far greater than any one question we can ask. So I've just narrowed it down to the broadest. Why are we the way we are? How did we get here? Why are we like this? This division in the country. Education. That's it. Education. And it, but that's not even the simple answer because because even with education, you got to make sure that you're educating history the right way. The, the, you know what I mean? Like true history and not the victory of history. History is written by the victors. And so if you're only getting that perspective, then... We hardly ever tell the worst of our stories, but in overthinking everything I do, I come clean. I'm very raw, and I tell some personal and private stories to illustrate my points, and especially to il illustrate my point of personal growth. Because I used to be the kind of person who might have come out and said that Paul Pelosi's attacker was his lover. I might have said that to be funny. I might have said that to be... Um, maybe even tongue-in-cheek. Like, I would say it sort of like Stephen Colbert before Stephen Colbert was Stephen Colbert. You know, and I'd say something in a way because I could pass as them, and it's sort of just ironic, and I don't really think it or mean it, but I, at that point, I don't think about the bigger ramifications of my words kind of thing. The show is about my journey out of that, republicanism um, to a, a different way of thinking. My question that I'm asking in these episodes I'm in right now, when you climb those hills of opinion, you can't prove that that was true. And even if you can, you weren't the first with the information. So your chances of being wrong and looking like a fool are, are greater. And, you know, you're selling your soul, right? Plus, Paul Pelosi's the husband of the Speaker of the House. He can get any man he wants. Like, I would sleep with Paul Pelosi because just for a power grab, right? And you think that's the best he can get? He think that's what he gets? Come on.